Hello once again, this is the Pencrest High School AP Physics 1 video series. This is video 5C, Elasticity and Elastic Behavior. Now we're all reasonably familiar with uh, what happens when you pull on a spring. Uh, it stretches out. If you pull harder on the spring, it gets even longer. This would be described as a, the qualitative nature of elastic behavior. Uh, we want to quantify it with a mathematical relationship. <coughs> now the relationship between how hard you pull on a spring and how long it gets is actually linear. <coughs> this is the basis of elastic behavior. Uh, first we need to define a few quantities. So we have L naught or L sub zero. This is the original length of the spring when there's no uh, force on it at all. F sub s is what we call the spring force. Uh, this is either the external force that's exerted on the spring um, or it could be considered the force exerted by the spring on the surroundings. Uh, L is the length of the spring under the influence of a particular spring force. And X is what we call the deformation of the spring. Uh, this is by how much the length of the spring actually changes. So mathematically, we can see that uh, the deformation X equals L minus L naught. Again, it's the change in the length. <coughs> now we see that if the... Uh, spring is longer under the influence of the spring force, the deformation is positive, and the force would be considered uh, tension when it's stretched out. If the spring is shorter, the deformation is uh, negative, and we would consider the force to be compression. Uh, we would be pushing on either side of the spring. Now, if we subject a spring to various spring forces and measure its deformation, uh, we would see a linear relationship between the two. Uh, if we double the force, we get double the deformation. If we triple the force, we get triple the deformation, and so on. So we end up with a graph. If we were to graph uh, spring force versus deformation, we get a nice linear relationship here. Ideally, the graph has no y-intercept. Um, we'll see that uh, real springs actually do have a y-intercept. But ideally, they don't. The slope of this graph is actually a uh, quantity of interest. It's called the spring constant. It's a measure of effectively how hard it is to stretch the spring. Uh, it's measured in newtons per meter. And uh, this spring constant is given the symbol lowercase k. we would write the relationship this way, uh, spring force equals k times x. <clears throat> Again, think in terms of y equals mx plus b. Slope is the k constant. Also recall, if you will, the uh, formula for the elastic potential energy. u sub s <clears throat> equals 1 half kx squared, where k is the spring constant. <clears throat> X is the deformation. Now we, these formulas kind of look similar. They both have K and X in them, <clears throat> but they are different. Uh, one is a, a force and the other is an energy. Uh, so you don't want to confuse the two. All right, now if we consider this um, diagram here, we have a, uh, a block that's mounted to a spring that's arranged horizontally. <coughs> the spring is at its original length when the block is at position B. The block is pushed to the left. In other words, you're compressing the spring <coughs> so that the deformation is this X sub A here. At this point, we would say that the spring force is K times X sub A. Uh, the force on the block would be to the right. The spring would be pushing on the block. The spring has uh, elastic potential energy in it, 1 half kx sub a squared. 
Uh, if we were to release the block from rest, the spring would push it to the right, and the, uh, the block would gain some kinetic energy. We'll ignore friction for the time being. <clears throat> As the block would pass through point B, it would have kinetic energy because it would be moving. Uh, the spring at that point would have no elastic potential energy because the deformation is zero there. It would also not be exerting any force on the block at all. As the block passes through point B, it then begins to continues moving to the right and it would start to stretch the spring out and it would slow down until it would stop at point C. The spring would then be under tension and it would be pulling with the spring force equal to K times X sub C, be pulling on the block to the left. It would also have elastic potential energy in it equal to one half KXC squared. Now we'll look at a uh, slightly different situation. What if the spring uh, were to be hanging vertically <clears throat> and then we put a mass on it? Uh, we have an image here uh, with several different situations shown. Uh, when we look at point A or situation A, the spring doesn't have any spring force on it, so it just kind of hangs there at its original length L sub zero. When we place the mass on it, place the mass M on the end of the spring, it's going to stretch the spring to some length L sub 1 that we see here. The mass will come to rest at some point below the original length of the spring. <clears throat> we see the deformation of the spring here is X1. At this length, if we consider the mass, it's in equilibrium spring force is pulling up with a magnitude equal to K times X sub 1 and then the weight of the mass mg is pulling down we would say that at point at under situation B where it's at rest KX1 equals mg this is what we might call the equilibrium position <coughs> or the rest position of the spring with this mass on it now if we then were to grab the mass and pull it down some distance below the rest position, uh, what can we say about the spring force at this point? Uh, the new length is L sub 2 and the deformation X sub 2 is uh, greater than X sub 1. So we would say that the spring force pulling up is equal to K times X sub 2. Now I'm at this point I'm holding, we're holding the mass down so we've got mg down and then an additional downward force because we're pulling. If we then release the mass at this point, the net force would be upward because the spring force pulling up is greater than the weight of the mass mg pulling down. So the mass would accelerate upward. If we were to lift the mass up above the rest position like we, we have in situation D here, the length L3 is now less than L1 and less than L0. So that would make the deformation X3 negative. The spring force in this case uh, would be less than the weight. So if you were to let go, the net force would be downward because Mg is greater than the spring force and the, the mass would accelerate downward. All right, so that's it for elastic behavior and elasticity. Next up is conservation of energy. Until then, enjoy. See you again soon.